Now, everybody knows because of the uh, press coverage, the huge amounts of press coverage that BYD, uh, the BYD Seagull is uh, almost definitely coming to the UK. Uh, so as I say, uh, near the end, uh, because of the larger picture and the wording from BYD themselves, uh, Mark Blundell, the, 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 the sales manager in the UK. Uh, so the UK now isn't a part of the EU, the European Union, and uh, it is in Europe, of course, but it's not in the European Union. Uh, so there is no current plan to impose a tariff on Chinese imported EVs, uh, such as what the EU are desperately hoping to do, and no doubt they will do once they've conjured up uh, their argument. Uh, so let's just briefly touch on the tariff side of things. Uh, so first, if I could ask you to subscribe if you're interested in this type of video, if you're interested in electric vehicles, uh, BYD cars, things like that, that would really be uh, brilliant and help my channel grow. Uh, so UK Transport Secretary Mark Harper, he says he understands why pe some people are concerned about Chinese imports. Uh, in terms of uh, technology, he insisted that uh, the, the UK had a good regulatory regime. Uh, he said, our concern is uh, about cost and competitiveness. That's what they're worried about, he said. Uh, so we, he also said, we have very robust measures in this country with trade remedies regime, uh, making sure that we have fair international trade and that we don't have uh, dumping or unfair subsidies. I hope this makes sense to you. Uh, so trade remedies protect domestic businesses, local businesses, or nearby businesses against economic injury caused by dumped or subsidized imports uh, or unforeseen surges in imports, for example. That's kind of, that's what he's trying to, the message he's trying to deliver. Uh, so they usually take the form of ad valorem tariffs, which essentially means that the uh, customs duty is calculated as a percentage of the value of the product. For the BYD Seagull, ironically, that's not the harshest tax in the world, I would imagine. So just for the fun of it, uh, let's imagine, just for a minute as an exercise, let's imagine we put a Trump tariff on the BYD Seagull, 27.5%. I think we can all agree it's a large tax, isn't it? 27.5% is quite big. Uh, so if you got the higher end BYD Seagull, the most expensive one, and you paid the British you know, converted price for it, so 10 and a bit thousand pounds, 27.5% uh, tax on top of that, taking it to 13,100 pounds. And then, of course, it's had to travel around going to be a little bit more expensive probably because it's a more smaller market, it's uh, right hand drive, that sort of thing. Mark up for the middle people. So let's just stick three to five thousand pounds on top of that. I don't think that's too bad. I really don't. That's 15 to 20,000 British pounds for a high end BYD single uh, with the Trump tariff on it. And uh, if you've got the most expensive version plus some middle people, uh, you know, trying to, you know, a bit of profiteering, shall we say. I think that's still quite reasonable, actually, uh, for basically what is a Honda Jazz, but uh, BYD electronic with good chemistry batteries and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, all the specs for the Seagull, awesome. You know, there's, I don't think there's really much that lets it down, apart from the colours on some of them, like the yellow one. If I lived in the UK, I would still be fine to go out and buy one, even if it was 20 grand, the upper end of that. I don't think everyone should be too happy to say that they would pay 20 grand because then of course it will come out and it will be 20 grand. But I don't think that's too bad, is it? So I, I may start considering if it was coming to the UK for 20 grand, I might start considering hanging on a year and getting a dolphin that's used, for example. Uh, so my question to you all is, would you all pay 15 to 20,000 British pounds uh, for the top of the range Seagull? with the 38 kilowatt hour battery. I've put a, a poll in the community section already, uh, so that will already be live. So if you could go back onto my channel after this video, go to the community section, and then there will be a poll if you would vote on that. Or if you don't want to do that, just comment yes or no. Yes, you would or no, you wouldn't buy a Seagull for 15 to 20 thousand pounds. I think that way, it's uh, kind of a good exercise for us all to have a little look and see what do, what, what we all think is, you know, what would we pay for the Seagull in the UK? Because I think I would be still happy if it was the upper end of that. The Trade Remedies Authority, the TRA, uh, conducts investigations to determine whether uh, to apply trade remedies on certain imports, different things really, 
in a blog on the gov.uk website. That's like the main, you know, the hub. That's where you go to get stuff from the government, the information. Joshua Parker, head of the economics unit at the TRA, explains that uh, where imports have been made cheaper due to government subsidies, international producers may have an unfair advantage over domestic producers. That's basically his angle on this, or that's kind of what uh, the government want you to think is their angle on this, of course. Trade remedies may help to correct for distortions caused by subsidies or uh, heavily subsidised companies, for example, coming in and selling things undercutting you, uh, and to create more of a level playing field between domestic and international producers. That's what he wrote. He wrote. Uh, so trade remedies, he also wrote this, trade remedies may provide temporary protection for only eight years, by the way, uh, to allow, uh, which will, you know, allows industries to adjust to changing circumstances. These sort of safeguard measures can only be in place for a maximum of eight years and require UK producers to include an adjustment plan showing how they intend to adapt to remain competitive once the measures in eight years' time will be removed. So that's what's going on. Uh, it may also be true in cases where a domestic industry needs time to develop uh, such as with new technologies, for example. Obviously, eight years might not really be ideal, though. You know, trade remedies may help to deter or correct for international predatory pricing. Uh, you, you could name something good, such as competitiveness, as predatory. Couldn't you? I don't think that's a very nice thing to do. I don't think it's reasonable either. Uh, so this is where a business dumps goods at low prices to force other businesses to exit the market. Now, for sure, BYD are not aiming to do that. They're actually just aiming to be participate evenly. Like they want to go to, a, you know, uh, they want to go and have a fair fight at this. You know, they don't want to chuck huge amounts of cars, make everyone buy their cars, and everyone else loses loads of money. They're not, they're not trying to do that. That's quite clear. So BYD has been in the news over the past 24, maybe 36 hours now, uh, because uh, the BYD boss was talking about the new Seagull coming to the UK. Uh, everybody's ears, I think, have pricked up because like auto car, electric, all these, all literally every news outlet that I can see has already written an article about this. Um, and I did mention it before, but uh, literally it's the only car to have such a response from the people that watch my videos. There are no other cars that have uh, brought about this sort of response. So the comments literally come in, even now, about videos I made in, you know, say like a year ago, uh, where people are saying they love them, please BYD, please bring them, They would, I would buy one immediately if it was available, uh, and I'll put some on screen for you now. It's also been in the news too about BYD having lost the throne to Tesla because uh, their first quarter sales this year were down 42%, which was a surprise to me when I saw that. Um, I saw it when they sort of announced the, the, the figures. Uh, that was on the last quarter of, uh, last, of 2023. So the first quarter of this year compared to the last quarter of last year, 42% less, which is a surprisingly large drop actually. Uh, but I think, you know, a lot of not actually not explicit to EVs, but actually just the car market in general taking a big hit. People are just, they've suddenly stopped in the last six to 12 months buying cars. I'm sure there are some people that have got some thoughts on this. Feel free to put it down in the comments. Um, but basically it's not that people don't want EVs. People think they're terrible. Uh, but of course, you know, you've got some media outlets writing that sort of stuff. Of course, it might show that if you've got your blinkers on. So you're not really looking at the whole picture or even more than this much of the picture. So BYD took the lead uh, last quarter, actually. I remember reporting on that, and I talked about it. Uh, they literally took over Tesla in the end of last year, and now they've lost it again. But I, I have no doubt. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to get that back again, I think. They'll end up selling more battery electric vehicles uh, than Tesla. Um, you know, partly they're cheaper, and they're, they're sort of at the lower end of the pyramid. Tesla's still a little bit more elitist, not elitist, that's the wrong word, isn't it? But, you know, a little bit more for people with a bit, bit of extra cash. BYD's a little bit cheaper. They're even already selling the BYD Seagull in uh, different parts of the world. So clearly they're not trying to just sell expensive cars to expensive people and nothing else. And uh, they're making money on basically all of their cars wherever they sell them. So they're doing really, really well. Uh, and I think that's genuine competition for Tesla. I just, I have a feeling that they will do better than Tesla 
this year in terms of uh, profit and uh, how many EVs they sell, basically. But I, there's no real guarantee on that, obviously. So BYD are just, I think they're just too compelling and quite new and uh, exciting. And I think Elon Musk said that BYD and other Chinese manufacturers are their biggest competitors. And I, I watched a, an interview with him talking and he, I think he said something like uh, the top 10 most competitive EV companies, you have uh, Tesla and then nine Chinese companies, uh, and they would make up that top 10, basically. I would totally agree if you've uh, <laughs> if you've seen a few of the, the new cars coming from MG and Geely and BYD, for example. Uh, really, really nice. Very, very nice. Uh, so we know that BYD have a dedicated space to producing right-hand drive exports for a few of their cars. One of them is the Seagull, uh, so they will definitely be exporting the right-hand drive uh, Seagull to those countries where they need a right-hand drive car. Uh, maybe not Australia, I don't know, but that would be pretty cool, but I, I don't know, honestly. And they have started to produce the Seagull in their dedicated export space in left-hand drive as well. Uh, there are people that message me in South America saying that they have uh, ordered one or just bought one. Uh, so this was basically uh, BYD, massive, massive company, huge company, and um, they've said they're going to create a new building and also use another building that they've already got and repurpose that, and that's where they're going to produce vehicles exclusively for export. And I suppose the reason why they might want to do that is maybe because they may need to weird little things, I don't really know, but it could be that they need to um, adhere to different um, practices, you know, manufacturing processes or something like that, or uh, to keep I don't know, it might sound silly, but maybe like termites, they might have to spray the buildings with uh, chemicals to try and keep those to a minimal minimum and then you know keep things very, very hygienic as they go along. Because when they rock up in Germany, for example, and they have uh, something on them like a bug, they will absolutely turn that around as that happened in Australia last year. The boss of BYD, the founder, has, he's, I think it's called Wang Chuanfu, if I can remember his name and, and say it correctly. He said that they are hoping to sell them in the UK, the BYD Seagull, if they can see clearly that people want to buy them. Uh, and it's quite positive that he answered that question in that way. Somebody asked the question, the question that we've all been dying to know, and he said that. Awesome. Uh, so and that was a British interviewer that asked him that. I can't remember the name. Here are some interesting things that have been said recently about the BYD Seagull in the past month that I think are noteworthy. So Ford's CEO, Jim Farley, called the uh, BYD Seagull pretty damn good during a conference in February. Uh, and he warned uh, other companies that they will need to catch up basically, which is interesting coming from the boss of Ford, who's having a bad time with electric vehicles at the minute. Uh, Farley also highlighted that BYD can offer the Seagull at an ultra low starting price whilst still earning a profit on all of their models, which is incredible. As I said in my last video actually uh, yesterday or the day before, Ford announced that they actually lost 47,000 US dollars on every car sold last year. So it's interesting that he didn't actually sound bitter. <laughs> uh, he really didn't. Uh, so I, I mean, the next comment, which is the former GM executive and president, um, he's called Terry. Let's call him Terry, but Wojciechowski. I think that's how you say his next name. Uh, he is the president of automotive at Caresoft Global. He told CNBC in, a, in an interview that uh, he thinks the BYD Seagull could be a clarion call for the industry. So I think that's a big thing to say, isn't it? Uh, Caresoft inspects every part of a vehicle digitally and physically to look for in inefficiencies. After studying the BYD's, uh, BYD Seagull, uh, he also said that what they did do is done very well, adding that it exceeds its quality and reliability expectations uh, for a modern car. So basically they're, they're saying it's a proper car and they're impressed with it and it's better than you would expect, I think he's sort of saying. So the UK market boss for BYD called Mark Blundell, he said that he is uh, excited to see the BYD Seagull come to the UK and he will do his best to get it here as quickly as possible. You can tell by things going on in the bigger picture, uh, Wang Chuanfu, what Mark Blundell said, 
it's it, it's it's basically it's basically confirmed for the UK, and I suspect that they are formally holding off until the UK advise whether there is going to be a tariff and uh, if if a tariff, how much of a tariff? Because what if they do a crazy tariff of forty percent or something? Like I think they would want to know that before committing to sending the car to the UK. So let's imagine that it's for sale now at those prices, 15 to 20,000 pounds right now, before on road costs and then any subsidies or whatever. Would you be interested in buying one? Let me know in the comments or do the poll. That would be really uh, brilliant. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, remember to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of these videos and uh, see you tomorrow in the next video.